right at our garage and test facility. Let's see what we're wheeling out for today's video. Looks like we've got ourselves a Ford Edge SUV. Good thing we got white paint because it's kind of hot today. Reflects the heat pretty good. I'm standing out here in 102 degrees and it hasn't even warmed up yet. This isn't just any run-of-the-mill Edge. This is a special edition called the ST Edge. It says so right here. You can also separate it from the other edges by the performance exhaust in the rear. Yeah, they're real. Don't touch them, you'll burn yourself. So what separates the ST from the other edges? Well, we'll take a close look and show you. On a standard edge, you get a 2-liter 4-cylinder putting out 245 horse or a 3.5 V6 putting out 280 horse. But on this particular version, you get the 2.7 EcoBoost, same as found in their pickup trucks, 335 horsepower, 380 pounds-feet of torque. Hooked to an 8-speed automatic transmission, in turn hooked to an all-wheel drive system. I'm told this engine does a pretty good job of moving out this 4,500-pound SUV. Must be true because it says Ford Performance right here on top of the motor. Official Fuel Academy, 19 City, 26 on the highway. We're going to rack up some miles and see for ourselves. Also, as part of the performance package, you get Monster 21-inch wheels, performance summer tires, and a good set of four nice large brakes, both on the front and the rear. The ST package also includes a bunch of luxury goodies in the cabin, too long to list here. And that brings us to the price tag. Here's the window sticker. No price because it's not for sale. For VIPs and other important people like me, the EPA date is not available either. I can tell you the base edge with the four cylinder starts at $30,000. This ST starts at $43,350, and this was loaded up with everything, all the extras, so it came to $52,325. What a deal. Keep in mind, Ford Edges are subject to discount. Now here's a window sticker from another Ford Edge ST. As you can see, $50,000. And the dealer has two of these. However, with discount, looks like they knocked off 10 grand. Wow. So it'd be a good idea to check with your local Ford dealer and see how low they're willing to go. This is a brand new 2019 right on the floor. By the way, if you don't want all this ST horsepower, the basic four-cylinder edge, well, let's see what they're selling for. Wow, you can buy two of these for one ST. Go figure. Oh well, let's get on with the video test of the ST. This brings me to one of my pet peeves, and that's getting a nice car without a spare tire. Just a cheap inflator kit that's going to do you no good if you get a cut sidewall. I realize a big tire like we have on the outside wouldn't fit in here, but it'd be nice to have something. But you're not going to get it if you get the ST package. That's why I'm carrying my heavy-duty emergency kit with all kinds of stop leak, air pumps, and the like. I will admit, though, there's a lot of room back here, especially with the seats folded. Room for lots of cargo. By the way, if you ever have a reason to look in here, you might have noticed a white funnel. This is a very important piece of equipment. Do not lose this. That's because the Ford Easy Fuel System has an internal lock in here. Only the nozzle from the gas station can unlock it. If you run out of gas and try to fill the tank with a gas can or a funnel, you're locked out. Will not go in unless you have this adapter. So make sure you have one of these in your vehicle if you don't get one. If you do, don't lose it. And since we're here, here's a valuable piece of information for you. If you look down the hole, you'll see a block. 
looks like a small white coin. That's there to keep people from siphoning gas out of your car. Gas thieves buy these. They stick a hose down and suck out your gas, and that block keeps the hose from going in. That's the good news. The bad news, while this block does keep a siphoning hose from going in, it also keeps the gas from going in, about 80% of it. It takes forever and ever to put gas through here, and most of it's going to back out and spill all over you. The bottom line is, this little insert needs to be punched out. Use a knife, a screwdriver, a handgun, whatever. Punch this out so you have a clear tube going down. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of problems putting fuel in this tank. I know from experience, trust me. Time to check out the cabin on the second row seating. Room for three children or two full-size adults. And here's the part I really like. The entire rocker panel and door sill area stays spotlessly clean because the door comes all the way down to the bottom and keeps it clean. This is the way it should be designed, but on many cars it's not. The glove box has decent room if you take the owner's manual out. Not the biggest infotainment screen I've ever seen, but it will do. Very simple radio and climate controls. One bit of controversy, the gauge cluster. On the positive side, it's very well designed, easy to read, in the shade. Unfortunately, it has this plastic cover that's popular with many manufacturers and what happens with this. Well, instead of telling you what the problem is, I'll just show you what the problem is. Right here. You get out in the sun. Can you read that? In all fairness, it only happens at certain angles. Oh, now it's worse. There we go. Car makers need to get rid of these plastic covers. It's really bad on Toyotas and Lexuses too, but if you see my videos. But you just have to live with it. Another item of controversy, which isn't a controversy for me because I like it, is the round transmission shift knob. Not as efficient as the new push button systems we see in Hondas and Acuras, but it works well enough for me. And I find it far better than the old stick shift system that we have on the consoles. This doesn't take up any space. It gives you the exact gear you want compared to the older stick, which takes up way too much space. And inexperienced drivers can put it in the wrong gear by accident. This is a very nice system, and I like it. Also, there's a sport mode here for those in a hurry. Amazingly, there are a lot of YouTube car testers that don't like this shift knob system. They spend the first half of their comment telling you they're real men and they want a real stick, not a sissy knob. And the second half, they whine like little bitches going, I just don't like the knob. I just can't stand it. I don't, I don't know why. I just it would go away. And my position is, oh, shut up. This is a better system than the traditional stick shift that slides up and down on the console. That's my statement, and I'm sticking to it. Enough said. Okay, first half of the video show and tell is over. Let's go out and do some driving. We'll start by taking these headlights out and see how they perform in the dark. It's dark enough. Let's take these headlights out and see how they perform. Look pretty bright to me, even if they are on low beam. Here we have the low beams on a building 100 feet away, very bright, a bit low to the ground, go to high beam, lights up pretty good in the center. Here we have the brights on a building 300 feet away, good widespread, good height, good brightness. Low beam, yeah, it reaches out about 180 feet, adequate for city driving, but back country, I think I'd want the brights on. On the base edge with these skinny tires, I've told the power steering is a bit too light. With these heavy tires, that's not going to be an issue. 
but otherwise there's no feel or feedback at all zero I guess you'll get used to it after a while let's put this in the sport mode and take a corner or two the all-wheel drive is engaged I'm told you can disengage it I haven't figured out how yet a lot of body lean but we're sticking to the pavement and that's what counts as we're doing all my videos we're going to drive over some mild speed bumps around 20 to 25 miles per hour to evaluate the suspension performance on impact I will tell you before we launch this is a very comfortable suspension because I've already driven it on the street but these giant 21 inch wheels and tires like having chunks of cement <laughs> clunk 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 let's give it a go bump number one pretty smooth but you hear that thumping from the big wheels number two number three and the big nasty one coming up more noise than impact not too bad overall really oh we did okay over the speed bumps you get on rough pavement on an expressway that's when the rumbling noises start coming up from these giant wheels and tires thump 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 just something you got to get used to after all, it's a performance vehicle, remember? And this little turbo has nice passing power. Pretty smooth, too. The official 0 to 60 time is 5.9 seconds which is pretty good considering the weight of the vehicle but it's the torque output that's really impressive let's do a quick 0 to 60 run in all-wheel drive oh yeah takes about a second to pick up these are very nice brakes too the previous driver this isn't my figure it's the guy before me got 20.5 mpg and today I reset to zero running around pretty hard zero to sixty times all that 15.7 I think that's the worst we're ever gonna see but more driving coming up and more fuel economy figures coming up summers here it's going to be hot outside so it's a good idea to understand how different paint shades affect temperature inside your vehicle and how they reflect heat as we'll demonstrate with my little temperature gun here for the record, it's 105 degrees outside today. The temperature on our outside white paint, 115.4. And on this black Lexus, 153.2. So if you live where the sun shines in the summertime and it gets rather hot, and you're going down to the dealer, pick out a color on your new vehicle, you got your choice, dark color, light color. Now you know which one to pick. Unless you live in Alaska, I guess it doesn't matter. We're going to take this vehicle out on a short expressway trip. See what type of fuel economy we can get. If we get time, might even take it off-road. We're coming to the end. Let's pull over and see what the fuel economy meter says. Okay, 50.4 miles, 25.9 mpg. I think the EPA claim was 26.0. If so, we're pretty close. Missed it by that much. I'm reluctant to take this out in the desert for my ranch patrol without a spare tire, but it must be done. So we'll stop by the ranch house, get some supplies, and... You know, I really got to fix that roof. I keep seeing that in all the videos, but 
Eh, maybe next time. And we gotta be careful because there's a full moon out. Even though it's not in focus, that means all the snakes, bats, and rats will be out. All four edges have enough ground clearance to be able to go off pavement. Of course, the taller the tires, the more ground clearance you get, and the better the ability. And if you order an edge with all-wheel drive, your ability to drive in sand, snow, or sleet, and mud is even better. With these big tires and all-wheel drive, I don't think we're going to have an issue driving out here, even in the sand. It's time to head back to civilization and wrap up this video. So let's do it. One thing I've noticed driving in the early morning and late evening is the way the dash reflects into the windshield. You can see right there. Nothing serious, but definitely annoying from certain angles of the sun. You'll get used to it. Of course, if you live in Alaska, where you don't have any sun, I guess you don't have to worry. This is our second fuel economy test, return trip on the same highway. Should be interesting to see if there's any difference between the first trip. Trip number two, 50 miles, 26.2, 26.1, pardon me. About the same. And my overall average mixed commuting has been 22.0, more than reasonable. So after a week of driving, what's my take on the Ford Edge? Personally, I think the basic Edge with the standard V6, or maybe even four cylinders more practical, certainly a lot cheaper. But if you're one of those drivers who wants the maximum horsepower the EcoBoost delivers, and the ST is available, you can afford the price, here you go. Here are some links to other performance vehicles we've driven, just click and watch.